good. Good one, so y'all give me your attention. Uh, we're going to enjoy what he's got to say. Good morning, fellas. Some of you guys may know from Ellie. Oh, they found out. My background is I started off as an athletic trainer. I worked in sports medicine in different, different areas, but uh, the last several years, I worked in pro hockey, which brought me to love it. There used to be a team called the Cotton Kings. So I got here, the Cotton Kings, worked a couple of years. The second team, we had a guy come in, one of the toughest guys I've ever seen that played for a different team. Um, I saw him in several other teams, Lake Charles, Odessa, um, but I knew he came up with the NHL. He was uh, working around with different different teams, uh, there's different levels of, of, of uh, pro, some of you guys may know. So uh, a couple of years we worked together, he was a player here, and then we uh, ended up taking over tech hockey, which at the time was a club hockey, but we kind of made it bigger because the cotton teams left. At the time we, we had a pretty good following between two of us, we had a full staff, and we, we made a really a premier product, uh, three or four thousand fans um, as a club team. So we were on the way of making a a D1 with Texas Tech Hockey, believe it or not, where we fell short, but the city had other plans for the building. So, uh, so we became best friends after that. A uh, lot, lot of turmoil, a lot of hard work that we put in. Um, things didn't ultimately come out the way we worked, wanted to, but we, we gained a really strong friendship. And the bonds we had with the work that we, we, we did together really solidified our friendship. Now we have a company together uh, that we've been, we've been uh, developing as well. So even though we didn't succeed on our first goal, We've been able to succeed in some other things with, uh, by working together and staying with it. So, um, I, I'm originally from uh, Mississauga, uh, Ontario, which is right outside. It's like a, a, a suburb of Toronto. Um, obviously, a hockey player, and he'll explain a little bit more about that. But one of the biggest things is that when you're 15 years old, you kind of know where you're going already in hockey. If you're going to be, you know, kind of a guy that plays around, messes around, or you're going to be one that's going to be serious. It's so serious that you move away from home at 15 or 16 to go chase that dream. You, you, you go start, instead of playing high school, you play um, junior high. So you go live with the family, several thousand miles away from the other side of the, of the, of the country. So uh, without any more introductions, this is Paul Peroni. special day and a pretty awful day, but a great day obviously when this, the country came together. Um, I'm sure everybody here remembers where they were when that happened. Um, I was actually training on the ice in Odessa, Texas, uh, getting ready to go to Houston's camp, and uh, we saw all the stuff on the televisions, and we actually thought Die Hard was on. It was just, uh, just surreal, and then all the sirens went off at the training mm -hmm. center that we were at, and our trainers came out and said, hey guys, we're about to go to war, get home to your families. And uh, of course we went home and I remember catching the second tower getting hit on TV, and it was just mind-blowing to, to think that as a country we're we're at this point in life. And well, I think the best part of it was, you know, it was just the rebuilding and watching where this country is, is gone from it. I know your guys' mantra this year is "I'm shaken," and I think uh, that's pretty impressive that uh, what this country has done from that. And uh, you know, kind of going to where I'm going with this whole thing is we're at tough times now, guys. Right? There's so many outside distractions that we're dealing with. As athletes, you deal with them even more. I think especially because you're in a community like this. Um, I was playing in very small towns in junior growing up. Uh, I played in some small pro teams, and of course played in some big cities and big leagues. Uh, but no matter what, you were such an integral part of the community. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. And kind of what I'll say is this, is you know, our coaches used to always tell us, well, whether you walk through that facility door, whether you walk through your dressing room door, you leave everything at the door. You leave all your hurt, so you've dealt with the loss of your family, you leave your politics, you leave everything at that door. Because when you come into the dressing room, you come into this training facility, you go into your equipment manager's room, your athletic room, you get, you get taped up, all that stuff stays outside of there. And it's all going to breed you as a stronger unit when there's all those distractions that are left. And you really need to remember that. This is a sacred part of what you're doing. And a lot of people don't get a chance to do this. And I'll go through some statistics later in this talk. They're talking about how blessed that you guys are to actually be in this room right now to play this sport at this level and what you're doing. <coughs> and uh, it's just extremely important. Um, to give you guys an example, for any of you guys that have aspects to go beyond high school, 
So a high school senior player who wants to go to an NCAA football team, you have a 1 in 17 chance. If I play any percent of you here, may go on to play D1, right? If you go on to play D1, about 2% of you from there will have a shot to go to the NFL. Obviously, if you go directly from high school, I think it's 1 in 10,000, so it's like 0 0.09, about the same chance you have of getting COVID, right? So, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's tough. So, so this, this level here that you guys, a lot of you guys are at, this is your NFL. And I want you to take that to heart. I'm not telling you to, to break any dreams, but I'm telling you that you need to appreciate where you are right now. Well, you guys are already off to a great start that I see. You guys are playing the Lobos tonight. Um, I mean, everything that you have now in front of you, all the stuff that you guys do together now builds up to what you guys do in December. I think, Coach, would that be when you guys would have a state championship? Or, okay. <clears throat> so, you know, I always think of myself, my dad always used to say, you know what makes a great athlete? And I would say, oh, the strongest guy, the fastest guy. He'd be like, no, keep trying. And I'd be like, well, maybe the smartest guy. No, the most honest guy. And you might think about that, why is it the most honest guy? Well, it's the most honest guy because, I mean, when you come walk into a dressing room, when you walk onto the field, when you walk onto practice, who are you being honest with with the efforts that you're going to put in? Are you being honest with yourself? Are you being honest with your parents? With your coaches? When you start a game, are you honestly prepared for it? At the end of the game, are you honestly true with what you did, how much you left on the field? Are you honest with your teammates? Are you honest with God? Okay, all that stuff comes into that. You have to understand that all the hard work and all the perseverance and everything that you guys put in, are you doing it honestly? Okay? <clears throat> and to me, that's extremely important. I think it just, it transcends beyond. Sorry guys, I got some noise here. Just want to make sure I'm missing anybody here. Um, so anyways, I'm going to kind of get into to my story. <clears throat> so I won. I'm very blessed to win six championships over my life. Um, three at a professional level. Um, two at a very high, high level. Not the Stanley Cup, obviously, but um, I won a very big championship with a team called the St. Louis Vipers. Um, essentially what it was, it's, it was professional roller hockey at the NHL level. We played in all the NHL buildings. Um, it was a very, very special time in my life because <clears throat> from day one in our practice, we all knew we had a special team. Every one of us knew that we had a chance in that room from day one of practice that we were going to win something. We set that goal in front of us and we say, guys, we're going to go to war from each guy that's beside us right now. <clears throat> and our coach came in with our captain and they brought a chain. Well, this thing. Now, we had about 12 players on the team, so it was a little tighter. Probably more of a choker on me right now. <laughs> okay, but these, this, this chain here, I made it for you guys. It's exactly every one of you as a player. Your names are on, your numbers are on each leg. Okay, your coaches are on this, your principal, your superintendent, your parents, your city. Okay, and of course, the most important part is the last class, you got God, right? So what we used to do is we would come to practice every day in our first game, our coach would say, guys, we're going to bring this chain in. Of course, you guys know the famous saying, you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? And I think the coach was showing me the guys, the, the, the chain that you had last year, and kind of the steps that you guys have evolved to come through to become where you guys are at now, right? <clears throat> so what we would do is we understood that, you know, the science of a chain is amazing because as you add a link, that's the link, the link gets stronger. And by the time you actually pull and actually get a link connected together, that load force shares across each link. So it's evenly distri distributed where the link together as one unit takes that strength, it becomes almost like a metal beam. Okay, so understand that, that analogy what that is. But after every game what would happen is the captain would give the chain to the guy that he thought was the strongest leg of that game. And so every game this did this and then we started doing it in practice too. So after every practice we would pass that chain on as well. Because you know, obviously if you don't practice hard, you're not gonna play hard. Practice is just as much a part of what you guys are doing as when you step on that field tonight under those Friday night lights. But the most incredible thing was, <clears throat> at the end when we won the championship, so we're in Anaheim, at the Anaheim Pond where the Ducks play, in front of 21,000 fans. We win 9-6, and I'm sitting in the dressing room like this after the game. I'm just exhausted. Looking around in the dressing room, seeing all my teammates, and it was just a surreal moment where I look and I'm like, everybody was tired you know, from the championship. But it was this, this look of, of ease, of release on, on the face of everybody. And you can see just kind of everybody just kind of looking around. And it was because we, we realized that 
We were probably about 70% of, exha of exhaustion, but that 30, 40%, it was, we didn't let our team play out. That pact that we made at the beginning of the season on day one, when we said, I got you, you got me, we're doing this thing together. We looked in each other's eyes and we knew that we did this for this reason. We raised that cup for that reason because we never let any of each other down in the dressing room. And we all just started hysterically laughing because as we all realized we finally did it. And of course we popped bottles you know, and celebrated like champs. <clears throat> but you guys are in, in a place right now that's, it's, it's, it's hard. This is a hard world we're in right now, boys. It's very hard. There's so many outside distractions. So many outside distractions. It's up to each one of you guys to bring the other guy up. Okay, I'm a big Navy SEAL guy. I've got a couple of friends of mine that are SEALs. They tell me stories of when they get their last four or fifth day of buds. They, like, they start going delirious, literally. I mean, they're in the boats, doing their last little swimming before they come in. They've been up for literally four days straight. They start hallucinating. They start seeing stuff in the water, ships, aircraft carriers. They think their buddies are in the water drowning. And they have these highs and lows. And what will happen is one of the guys will shout out, hey guys, I'm having a high here, I'm seeing something. You know, and then you'll hear one of the guys, man, I'm having a low, like, like I think I'm gonna die, I think I'm gonna die. And they use that to, to bring each other up when, when somebody gets really tough. Of course, when they're done buds, I mean, these guys are the best military force in the world. The strongest people in the world, not so much because of the physicality of it, but because of this. And I'm sure your coach tells you guys that all the time. This will overcome this all the time. But you gotta put them together, integrate that. So <clears throat> I wanna do a really cool thing. Dad, you don't mind doing this too. I want all you guys to link up arms. Okay, I want you, everybody to link up, create a circle. Dad, I want you to get in this team, both sides your side, <coughs> and link up arms with them. 